And welcome back to more Super Mario Sunshine! So last time, we finally returned to Pianta Village. So this time, we're starting out with our final 100 coin Shine Sprite. While this is possible to collect in other episodes, I tend to go after the 100 coin Shine Sprite of Pianta Village in Episode 1. So while we're here, we'll also be going after most of the blue coins here, minus the ones that are only in Episode 6, and one that's only in Episode 8. There also should be one more that's only obtainable in a daytime episode, so we'll be getting that as well at some point later on. Uh, but the majority of the blue coins should be obtainable here. Um, so this one's a little bit of a doozy. Uh, like before, we basically need to jump and carefully hover over here uh, to the village underside. So once we're here, we need to make our way, I think, around to this spot, and there should be an M, like so. Um, kind of a sneaky hiding spot. The one also behind the village entrance, I feel like, is also kind of easy to forget about, uh, other than in episode 6, where you do have to go that direction uh, to talk to the mayor to um, collect the shine sprite. So, um, this episode is probably not ideal for collecting the blue coins, but I figured it made sense to collect uh, as many of the blue coins as possible along with the 100 coins. Um, the problem is the chain chomplets. For the most part, this should not be a problem, but there are a couple that I'm a little bit worried about. Um, I might have to fight the Chain Chomplets, but hopefully that will not be a, a problem. Um, at least they're not particularly difficult mini-bosses. I kind of think of them as mini-bosses. This game, I feel like, is kind of odd about boss battles other than like Shadow Mario, which is a, a fairly consistent chase in every world. Um, a lot of areas do have very uh, obvious boss fights. Uh, Pianta Village is one that kind of doesn't because there's no like boss music uh, in any point of this level. Um, and I guess even if you consider the Chain Chomps and Chain Chomplets to be kind of like bosses, they're not particularly tough enemies. Um, so that was kind of a close call, but but at least I know where they are, so, so I at least have an idea of what areas to avoid for now. Um, I think next I want to worry about this, because this might be a little bit tricky to uh, navigate over to the other triangle with all this lava around. I like how the coin fell directly in the lava, so we'll have to be a little bit careful. Uh, normally I'd actually slide along the path, um, but obviously that's not really an option, so let's just carefully hover down. And there we go. Um, this one I'm actually more worried about because of having a less direct path. We might have to wall jump like this uh, to make it up here, um, since, again, sliding is fairly precarious in this particular episode. On the whole, I actually think Pianta Village is a fairly easy level for blue coins. A lot of them are kind of uh, in easy-to-find spots, but the big challenge is just how many episodes you have to play. Um, we've already gotten the ones in episode 5, um, we've gotten the ones in episode 3, there's still some in episode 6 that are only in episode 6, um, so it's just kind of a pain having to jump in and out of this level so much <laughs> to find everything, but in general this is actually not that bad. Um, as far as blue coins go, I feel like this is probably one of the easier ones, actually. Um, minus the annoyance of having to constantly swap episodes. Um, I feel like even though we got through them fairly quickly, um, I do still stand by uh, my opinion that, that Noki Bay is the worst area. I feel like the only reason we got through there as quickly as we did was I kind of practiced that level more because of being concerned about it, um, and also having failed recording attempts so I actually had a better idea of where everything was. But basically my, um, I have a tendency to 
better retain information on things I've struggled with than things I haven't struggled with. And uh, Noki Bay Blue Coins is definitely something I've struggled with quite a bit uh, throughout many playthroughs of this game. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of more committed to my memory than other blue coins that are easier to get and thus don't stand out as much. Um, but yeah, Pianta Village is not too bad. It doesn't hurt that a lot of blue coins are just found through um, specific means like rescuing Piantas in one episode, so that's almost a third of the blue coins alone uh, in that one episode uh, from one consistent source. But yeah, in general, I also think Shalado Beach has several very cryptic ones, uh, like all the ones hidden in the sand are a little bit uh, tricky to find. Um, but beyond those, um, I feel like in general, maybe it's because I use a guide, but I, I actually don't mind the blue coins as much as most people do. Um, it is kind of ridiculous when you think about it, uh, because we've basically doubled the length of this playthrough just by going after all the hidden Shine Sprites, uh, because you actually only need, what, 50 Shine Sprites roughly to finish the game? Um, that's really not that many, especially when you think that uh, 64 required 70, and I think Galaxy needed 60, so... But Galaxy also had longer levels to begin with. By the way, uh, when there's no water in this hot spring, um, you can ground pound the center uh, to make a bunch of coins appear. Um, I feel like the night episodes are inherently better for collecting coins in. I really can't think of any day levels that have enough coins, uh, but I feel like this and episode 5 are perfectly doable. I'm not sure about 6, or at least I'm not sure about 7 and uh, 3 though. By the way, um, this statue has not only coins, but also a blue coin. Um, and if my count is correct, uh, we should be good to go. Um, I think there should be eight in episode six, and then one only in daytime, and then one only in episode eight. Uh, so yeah, we should have everything. Um, so now we are going to shift gears over to the uh, 100 coins. So yeah, overall not bad, and even the 100 coins is not terrible. I feel like I've talked about this al already a little bit, but I do feel like Noki Bay is like the last really tough area, minus a few minor annoyances in uh, this level. Uh, but this level is actually pretty easy, like all the really tough levels are either in the plaza or in, in earlier episode 8s. Like, a lot of episode 8s in this game are pretty rough, like um, Watermelon Festival, Roller Coaster Balloons, um, are both pretty well known for not being great. And then you have like all the Delfino shines that are really um, annoying to get. So yeah, also this intent is still here even though the Chain Chomp only appears in episode 4. I guess it makes sense they wouldn't uh, program separate uh, ground um, geometry for basically every other level. Um, like have it switch over halfway through, but it is kind of funny that that's still there. Um, so yeah, I I do feel like this game is sort of like inconsistent when it comes to difficulty. Like some of the toughest challenges are early on. Like hypothetically, you could complete the uh, pachinko machine as one of your first shine sprites. Why would you? Um, would be my question, but it is actually a possibility. Um, so for the 100 coins, in episode 5, you would have to rely on the coins kind of guiding you to the secret entrance, and also the bees with Yoshi. Um, in this episode, we have to rely a lot on these crates, and also um, the mushrooms in the area. Um, so basically, if you go to the top of a mushroom that has a flame on it, and then you extinguish the flame, um, this one should work over here, um, if, you're, if you extinguish this flame and then ground pound, it, it should give you coins. Like, uh, so. That's, that's a great way to get a lot of coins. It's not quite as fast, I think, as episode 5, but this is how I've, already, how I've always done this level, so I'm just really used to this method. Um, 
I am not entirely sure how you're supposed to figure this out. I remember having to use a guide for this. I still have my copy of the Nintendo Power Guide. It's in really bad con condition because the guide is like 20 years old. Uh, I've been kind of contemplating finding a replacement just because I like this game so much and have a lot of nostalgia for this guide, so maybe someday I'll be able to track down a version of it with, um, without all the blue coin charts marked up and just a very pristine condition version of that Nintendo Power Guide. Um, it feels like from what I've seen online, the third party guides are a lot more common. Uh, the Nintendo Power Guide seems to be a little bit rare, but that's, uh, the branding of guides for Nintendo games at least I preferred. Um, the other company's guides were not quite as accurate, so I tended to not rely on them too much. Um, but yeah, the Nintendo Power Guides were almost always like spot on with their information. Alright, so this is one of those cases where we are one coin short. Uh, luckily there should be some over here in... Oh, we already cleared that out. Uh, that might be a problem, actually. Um, there has to be a crate somewhere to break that will have a coin, but again, this is one of, those, one of those cases where it is good to know, like, fairly remote coin locations, just in case you need one at the very end. Like, these should have coins in them, thankfully. Alright, so we are done here. That is all of the blue coins that we can get in this particular episode for now. Um, and the final 100 coin shine sprite. Um, nice. Uh, we are almost done with the game, actually. Alright, we still have quite a few blue coins to collect though, so let's get to work. And we're headed to episode 6. Oh no, I just went away for a bit and now look! I can't believe it! Another fine mess, and it's a doozy! Some of the villagers are trapped in that burning ooze. And I just finished evacuating everyone a little while back. What in the world's happening? I think I may just start crying. I'm sorry to trouble you time after time, but please, could you find the time to help us out again? Ten villagers are trapped in the slime. You must hurry. At least this Pianta is a little bit nicer than the hotel manager, who basically talks about tricking Mario into helping, while this mayor is actually, like, distraught and caring about the people who are being affected by the current crisis. So that's nice. Um, Alright, so for this particular uh, mission, uh, I want to focus on rescuing all of the Piantas first, instead of trying to collect the blue coins at the same time as rescuing everyone, because we do have a time limit. Um, it's not exactly a strict time limit, but uh, with the animations having to play out uh, for, for collecting the blue coins, I would like to have a little bit of extra time to just kind of le leisurely go through and uh, not have to worry about uh, getting a game over, not a game over, but losing a life here. Um, also, speaking of which, this is a good time to bring up that um, once you have completed the blue coin part of this level, if you go back at any time uh, and talk to the Piantas, instead of giving you a blue coin, they will give you a 1-up. So if you need extra lives, um, this is a great level to collect lives in. You'll get 8 per run, and with a time limit of like... 3 minutes for the level, and obviously like an, an extra minute or two to collect everything. That's not bad, like 8 lives per like 5 minutes is pretty good. Um, I really don't need lives to this playthrough. Uh, we really haven't died as much as I thought we would, to be honest. Um, yeah, overall, this has been a pretty uh, smooth playthrough, minus a few hiccups here and there. Um, but now we have a slight problem. Uh, we are missing one Pianta, and I don't. Never mind. 
right here. Uh, I was gonna say I didn't remember where he was, but uh, that was actually really easy. So the timer has stopped, so let's collect our rewards. Phew, you saved me! Thanks a bundle! Alright, so basically the adult Piantas all have blue coins, the two younger Piantas do not. Thanks, sweetums! And uh, this green Pianta over here is actually really interesting, uh, for one very specific reason. Phew, you saved me! Thanks a bundle! I don't know why that is, but he will throw you into the air. I guess he might be a chuckster. Um, also, there's still one more blue coin that I need to remember to collect before leaving this level. It's not too big of a deal because uh, we do need to go to episode 8, so we will have another chance to collect this one, but we might as well collect it while we're here. But just to reiterate, thanks for your help. So yeah, these two Piantas here do not give you anything. Thanks for your help. Alright, so how many blue coins do I have again? Uh, 225, so that's 25 for this area, so I'm missing three Piantas. Um, so let's collect the remaining blue coins. Uh, by the way, something I actually don't think I've talked about yet, and have been meaning to talk about, is actually the camera setup of this version of the game. Um, at least I don't think I've mentioned it so far. Um, so basically, at launch, the camera was different than in the, in the GameCube version. So like, the horizontal axis was inverted from what the GameCube version had in terms, in terms of its setup. Um, in the November update, they did add the ability to invert uh, the X and Y axes of basically every individual part of the camera control, including like, uh, the zoom-in view. Uh, so that was really cool, but it was definitely one of those things, like the GameCube controller support, that really could have been in the game at launch, and probably should have been. Um, but it's nice to have. Um, personally, I actually adjusted to the uh, new modern control layout relatively quickly, um, even though the GameCube version um, definitely uh, is one I'm more used to, I actually really quickly adapted to the cam camera controls here. Um, so, so I'm actually using the modern layout, even though it's not the original layout at all. Um, because I've played so many other like modern games that uh, have the uh, more traditional standard camera layout, um, I'm just really more used to that now, and even going back to games like Sunshine can be a little bit clunky, so I am glad that they have the options, to be honest. Um, this sign has our last blue coin for now. Uh, there's one more blue coin, and it's uh, not in this episode, so we are done here. But yeah, the game definitely should have launched with that November update. Um, even if it meant delaying the game, I think it would have helped a lot because as is, the collection launched in kind of a poor state, and I think the overall reception would have been a little bit stronger if certain bugs were not present. But in any case, uh, we are basically probably going to finish the game next time. We only have one more blue coin and one more uh, shine sprite to go before we can uh, head back to Corona Mountain. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Super Mario Sunshine.